Each year, nearly 700,000 people in the U.S. suffer a stroke, leaving nearly 6 million people who have had a stroke at some time in their lives. At Northwestern's Balance and Falls Laboratory, students and scientists are focusing on how stroke and brain injury survivors recover and relearn how to walk. And they're doing it with the help of experimental cobots, intelligent robots that collaborate with physical therapists and patients. The Balance and Falls Laboratory at Northwestern University is experimenting with a state-of-the-art rehab robot. Okay, Chicago Bears fan Dwayne Mem suffered a stroke 11 years ago after an accumulation of strains. Very nice. I had high blood pressure at the time, and uh, I was about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I was overweight, and I was going through a divorce. Things just got kind of bad at the time. I worked, worked a lot of hours at the job. Rich my blood pressure and everything got to me. I was completely paralyzed on my left side. I had no movement. Dwayne now volunteers at Dr. David Brown's clinical research lab, where students and researchers study human locomotion and robotic technology for stroke survivors. And when I say go, I want you to walk across to the end of the walkway. I was very interested in sports growing up, and I love the idea of a person training their body, training their movement to be the very best when they're performing an athletic task. And I see the rehab process in brain injury and stroke in a similar way. Dave Brown coaches stroke survivors, training them like athletes to achieve their highest okay, goals. Stop there. Very good. Nice job. And he manages a multidisciplinary team of students, biomedical engineers, physical therapists, and physiologists, looking at all aspects of the rehabilitation process. When looking at schools, I was really drawn to Northwestern. I came to the orientation, and the interaction with the teachers was awesome. Um, I really liked the setting. They really stressed the importance of working together, not having competition in the school. We have two types of students, the Doctor of Physical Therapy students and the PhD students. With the Doctor of Physical Therapy students, we're primarily training them to be great clinicians. And by engaging in research in our laboratory, they learn that the knowledge that they're gaining here in Northwestern is not the end of the stream of knowledge, that there is new knowledge being developed, new ideas being developed, and that they can be a part of that development. Now the PhD students come here to learn how to be professional researchers. Okay. They learn how to work within a group setting and mm -hmm. solve very difficult problems, problems that have never been solved before, and develop new knowledge that can revolutionize the way things are done. The Northwestern students rely on volunteer stroke survivors to help guide them in therapy design and experimental analysis. Joy Ray's pedal power supplies important data. An athlete and a runner before she had her stroke at age 33, Joy is now a regular at the NU lab, putting her athletic training to use on retrofitted bikes or for a new endurance and aerobic exercise. You can do more things that you wanted to do out in the general population and said it was a little bit scary out there. And so the motivation is greater to see if you can start back doing things you used to do. Dave Brown and his team at the downtown Chicago lab are experimenting with the Kinney Assist robot, one of only four in the world. Instead of concerning ourselves with safety, we can now concern ourselves with making the person's environment uh, exploratory and allowing the person to explore all the different options that they may have to solve the problem of walking in balance. It's different, different experience, uh, but it's also uh, helpful in that whenever I stumble or I, I lose my balance and I start to fall, the kinesis will always grab hold and not let me fall to the ground. And that's what I really like about it. The robot weighs in at nearly 600 pounds, but it has such delicate engineering that stroke survivors can easily maneuver around in it. Julio Santos Monet is the design director at Kenia Design in Evanston, Illinois. He puts his Northwestern mechanical engineering degree to use designing and marketing this medical machine. It's a device that is very closely connected to a person, and by itself it can't really do anything. 
But as soon as you combine it with a person, then they can dance together. The Kenny Assist robot isn't like its industrial siblings on the assembly line. This collaborative robot, or cobot, doesn't replace humans. It works with patients and therapists. The idea is that it's a, what we call a collaborative robot, that it allows not just for a patient-to-machine interaction, but patient-machine and therapist, or patient-machine professional interaction. The prestigious Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago holds the patent on this therapeutic tower of hoists, straps, sensors, and signals. Dr. Elliot Roth collaborates with Dr. Brown to find ways to lighten the load on therapists okay. Okay. while That's giving fine. stroke stop. survivors and the stop. maximum workout. Stop. Good. Stop. And so the idea of machines so we'll is to help do some of that heavy lifting, uh, have the machine do some of that difficult uh, activity so that it frees up the therapist basically to do what the therapist does best. Northwestern students are using the robot to design new rehab techniques that are safer for both the therapist and the patient. The experiments help the students with their research, but they also help the stroke survivors track their accomplishments. We work together. They're so reassuring. They, they're coaching you along, they're working with you. And they've known you for years and years, so they see the progress you made. And little slight improvements that I might not notice, but still today people say, hey, I remember you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, now look at you. Okay, good, thank you, good. But it takes more than machines to recover from a stroke and other brain injuries. It takes motivation, too but motivation can be marred by a fear of falling. Unfortunately, it's fairly common after stroke because of loss of balance to have falls. And our, our, our vast experience with this is when people fall, they often have a fear of falling in the future. And the biggest problem of that is a fear of falling becomes a fear of walking, and then the fear of walking becomes inability to walk. The experts say that making mistakes and recovering from them helps re-educate the muscles and rewire the brain around the stroke-related brain injury. And using the robot for walking therapy allows stroke survivors to make mistakes safely. It feels secure. You, it's in there. It's got, it's got you on both sides. It's got you in the harness around your legs and everything. It's, it's like a security blanket somewhat. But you gotta let your mind know that it's gonna be all right. The Northwestern team of students yeah, and doctors are developing a rich collaboration <laughs> between okay. professionals, patients, and machines, giving stroke survivors both confidence and mobility. These individuals know that they can go as far as they want to go, and we won't stop them and we'll help them.